So, to begin, may I thank um, Rob for that explanation, but we need to make a um, declaration saying that this meeting will be recorded um, for record keeping and perhaps to be broadcast at a later date if you're unhappy with this. Could you please leave the meeting? Thank you. So we'll move on now to the first item on the agenda. And when? Uh, this is Sarah Hattel. Um, this is yeah. Sarah Hattel. Uh, apologies. Any other apologies? Right. Then um, statement from the chairman. I've got two or three from the last meeting. Last time we met, I can't remember if it was mentioned that Ian Descent had resigned. Um, this is the um, full um, meeting where we can confirm that he's resigned. The government has accepted his resignation and we are going to begin the process of reappointing after the, they were going to begin the process after the election. They were concerned about bring, um, beginning the process of appointing before the election. Um, so, so, because one minister could begin the process and another could finish it in that case, which would mean that we'd be a member um, short, um, but it'll probably be um, by about October before it's sorted. Anyway, Brecon Beacons have um, appointed a new chief executive, Catherine Meelin Jones, so we wish her very well in her post and we congratulate her. And also, there are changes in Gwynedd. David Gibbard has been appointed as chief executive, so we look forward to um, work um, with him closely. I'm sure we'll have a meeting with him during the next few weeks, and we wish him very well. And then an internal meeting, Joe Worrell, the head of HR, is leaving us after 17 years. So all the best to Joe for his um, um, retirement and thank him for all the work he's done for the authority. We've worked very closely with him several times. Thank you very much to him. The next item is not on the agenda, but that's a mistake. We have mentioned about giving the opportunity for the chief executive to make a statement. So it will be something that should happen regularly from now on. Emir, the purpose of this slot is just um, for you as members to be informed of a few um, uh, matters. I referred last time that there were two SMS projects, uh, River Eden um, is one, um, and I think members have um, received training on what those plans were and the life um, programme as well we've been doing. There's one new project which has been recommended, which is sustainable um, habitats. Um, and one of the project officers has um, is working on that scheme. Also, I'd like to report on the developments in Penna Pass. As you know, we've had to move on with similar arrangements to last year. There were a few changes in the way and um, timing of um, different orders. So this arrangement will be seven days a week until October. And because of that, it's not possible to, um, um, per to sell six months permits as we used to. So we'll reconsider that in the October permits, that is. Along with a um, wider traffic plan, there has been consultation and Gwyneth Council has asked us to prepare a paper to their um, lead team to consider putting the whole um, plan worth 27 million, putting that scheme forward in order to level up and that uh, those plans were to go in by end of June. So we will hope to be able to move forward with that um, plan. Then hardship fund um, application with three um, national parks in Wales now are um, eligible for money from the hardship 
funds and David Edwards is doing some work on behalf of the park to make sure that we have access to that and we have agreed on some kind of outline of what we will be um, spending it on and that includes additional staff, rubbish, cleanliness, etc. in our sites. The um, seasonal officers specifically for this year, it's they're almost all in place. We've got a com digital communications officer which has been appointed, which just started this year. An assistant for um, car parks is in place and there are five um, wardens as well. We haven't um, quite finished the recruiting um, process for that, but we will soon. For those of you who travel through Penryn, perhaps you've seen scaffolding on the main building and solar panels have been put on the roof and that work is complete and the roof will produce 40 kilowatts of electric every day and that is enough to run the office and whatever will be left over will go to batteries in the office and once the batteries will be full it will go to the grid so it will be a long-term saving and a part of our targets for carbon um, money for sustainable, sustainable landscapes um, for last year has all been claimed, 1.7 million. And there is a scheme worth 900,000, which has been recommended. We um, haven't received the letter to begin yet, but um, it's the same project that were put forward in the working party earlier in the year. Plast Tunnable will be hoped to reopen um, middle of next month. And then scoring the end, maybe end of June. And um, thank you. Can we also welcome the team from Audit? Thank you for coming to us. Eros, Nick, Selwyn, Matthew Edwards, and Sean Owen, I believe. I, if I can see you all on the screen, um, we look forward to your contribution later on. Then we'll move on to then the right of the um, public to ask questions. I don't think anybody has um, not there. Declaration of interest. Is there anybody who wants to declare an interest? I see nobody raising their hands. Uh, item four on page four we'll go through them to make sure that they're correct in the first place page four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven would anybody propose that they're correct please uh, Edgar, can you go ahead? Edgar, uh, do you propose that they're correct? Anybody second? And if you could all show by raising your a blue hand. Elwin and John is seconding, so could you raise a blue hand? So that's been carried, thank you. Any matters arising from the minutes? If you could uh, get rid of the blue hands, please, unless you want to raise something. John? Uh, Owen. Uh, Owen? Edgar and Owen? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just at the bottom of page six, item two, there's a reference that the chief executive has concerns um, I was rather concerned that there was no specific item on the agenda on this. That is, I fully realise that I don't need perhaps an update by the chief executive every time, um, but we need to we need to be confirmed that we have the right to put an item like that on the agenda in the future. Yeah, maybe the agenda as well. Just maybe... Yes, it will be on the agenda. We just um, didn't put it this time, that's all. Emir, do you want to come in? Uh, 
Yeah, to show the unwedded and not the Yes, the I'm sure Anwen will make a note of that uh, and put it on the template. So just apologies that it's not there. Thank you, Edgar. Um, yeah, Danidi. Uh, yes, we have. I lost you on the screen just there. Where are we now? On number five? Matters arising from the minutes. Okay. Have you finished that? No, we haven't. We're still on matters arising. Brian has his hand up. Do you want to? I want to come in after matters arising if I can. Okay. Brian? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, page four, item one three. Um, I think we have been notified about this, but I think it would be worth uh, having it reiterated what the Minister's response was. Um, yeah. Do you want me to come in, Chairman? Wynne has um, circulated the matter to members. Um, if you haven't received it, let us know. And also, it's on the agenda of the next working party in order to be discussed. But um, briefly, um, well, he wasn't eager to do anything so late in the term with an election in the pipeline. He was interested in knowing what we're doing with additional powers. Um, it's something that can be discussed and reported back when we have the opportunity. Whoever will be the minister by then, of course. If that's all right, Brian. Thank you. Yes, I just thought it would be uh, sensible to have that recorded uh, in the uh, in the minutes of this meeting. Yeah, that's right. Um, sure. If there's nothing else arising from the minutes, if we can move on to item six, which is um, a motion by John Pugh. Edgar, I just asked if I could come in at the end of five. I just want to make a proposal on the notice of motion number six. Um, I'd like an explanation before making the um, proposal so that members know the whole story, if that's all right. Well, I am against this motion. And what we have here, well, I want you if you go to page 76 today, it shows quite clearly there. Where is it? 76. If I can find 76. Yes, it says there under 4 5. If you read that, and then if you go to page 106. I'm 106, in paragraph 19 and 20. There's mention there. And then you go to 113, where it says in the decision that we have a task um, forced to look at Welsh names and places and the members of that group are councillors Judith Humphreys, Elwyn Edwards and Alwyn Griffith. And I think that it's um, dreadful that things like this go on and we've passed things like that to work on, what was the word? On a pilot with the Welsh Language Commission um, that things like that, that they come back to report to the authority. Well, now, there was something on nation something last night, where is it? That, um, that the councillor, Roberts, says, it's in English, National Park Toll Ditch. Well, I don't think any um, councillor or members should tell us what to do. We are discuss, we discuss and pass things. So a cynic would say that it's somebody who Tory would come from the wood who just realised that's an election um, coming soon and that they wanted um, headlines in the paper to be re-elected. I don't know. But the 
um, proposal is that we pass item six and move on to item seven and uh, let the committee discuss the committee which has been appointed to come back can i come in here i have um, a notice of motion to be democratic i should be allowed to put this forward and explain to edgar mr chairman According to the rules, I have the right to propose that we pass this number seven. This is the proposal. Is there a seconder? Um, I'm not telling you you have to ask it. I'm just asking you. Iwan, can you give us a, a guidance? I'm sorry. Yes, you do have the right to make a proposal. And one of the proposals which has been made is that we move forward to the next matter in the business of the authority. So it depends, of course, whether that is seconded or not. Is there a seconder to Edgar's proposal to begin with? Tim seconds it. Edgar's proposal. Phil? Yeah, I was only going to second it uh, because I too oppose this on grounds of principle and practicality, and we should wait for the report from um, our group. Thank you. Uh, John, do, do in, um, John, I accept um, the intention <coughs> behind your um, motion, but there is an arrangement in place already to discuss this. We have a scrutiny group which has been established. Sorry, Wynne. If I can come in on this, now that it's been seconded, John has the right to respond to the proposal which has been put forward because he made the original proposal. So he has the right to give a full response and then the matter will go to the vote. All right, John, John to respond, thank you. Yes. And thank you to those of you who um, support me in putting this motion forward before you. It's a motion which came from the Welsh language working party, as Edgar said, and I proposed then, and it, I was told it would have to come to the authority. So, of course, that is what I've done now in order to come to a decision. There have been many changes in the park. For example, Wolf of Croes now has gone past. Pistich my class sweat is M20, and Dol here has become Long Meadow, etc. How much of this can we suffer? I don't want to be a hypocrite and tell other people what to do unless we do it ourselves. And to give the status of the Welsh language has changed a lot in the last 20 years, and as an authority, we must lead from the front and strengthen the language and put a stop on this, these new names because the old names, all native names, they have a rich history behind them. And once we lose them, we've lost them forever. So um, I, um, as Edgar has, Edgar wants to take it to a working party and do a working party and do a working party and to have experts and people in costs looking into the situation, another we working party and committee and nothing done in the end. Or we can refuse it, of course, or I feel that it's the length that we're on the Welsh language and if we're going to leave it too long, we're going to lose them. So I propose that we pass this today for the future of the language, the future of young people, and the future of the place names which we have in Wales, rather than it being something we read from a book. For example, Gururu. There's no mention for Essok this day, it's Gururu. And, um, you know, they asked, well, there's no mention. Well, the, you know, these are names which you could use. And I hope that I'll have your support today to move this forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Mr. Chairman, before you come in, Edgar. In a report later on, we are 
um, praised for good governance in the authority. And to make a decision like this without a full report, I think we would be neglectful of our responsibilities as an authority, to be fair. I th think we should ha have this um, discussion, and certainly this will be discussed in the scrutiny committee, which has been established by us to look at this problem. And I think that it should be something which is done after careful consideration. Edgar, yes, um, just before we go to the votes, it says that it's, you know, it's a, the length hour, et cetera, and that the Welsh is important for him. Well, why is the statement which we needed anyway has been done in English only? Um, 9.38. I'm willing to go to the vote, Mr. Chairman. Can I just correct that? Edgar, hang on. I just want to clear my name. Edgar says, you know, well, um, I... I want to say this has nothing to do with party politics, and I don't want to be uh, political, but whatever the press puts in, I haven't written that, whatever's in the press. And if it was in English in the press, I didn't. Can I ask a question? Is there any mention about the committee which has been, and is still in the pipeline, to discuss these Welsh names? The discussion, the discussion, um, is on this motion and it should be restricted to that. If that motion fails, then we move on to discuss John's um, motion fully. Of course, we could have that discussion, but the discussion is should be restricted to the motion which has been made and has been seconded. Therefore, I think what I would advise is that we have the discussion and we move forward and that's all. If that fails, we'll have a full discussion on John's proposal. Okay, I've got three others who want to come in here. Well, I don't think that the standing orders allow that. Edgar's um, Proposal. John has the right to respond to that, and Edgar has the right uh, to close the discussion. And um, that's what can be done. And the other people who wants to come in, well, they'll have an opportunity to give their opinion if Edgar's motion fails and we move on to a full discussion on John's proposal. All right. So we'll go to the vote, therefore. Before we go to the vote, there are three hands up. That is Edgar, IF, Ivor, and, and you as well, Win, but you withdraw now, I see. So, can I ask those hands to come down before it goes to the vote? Can we go to the vote? Do you want to use the blue hands to have the vote? So who's in favour of Edgar's proposal? I haven't got a blue hand, Mr Chairman. Under those circumstances, it's better that we ask, is that the blue hand? No. I think it's better to ask. It's much clearer, isn't it? Right. Do you want to ask you one? Usually, I keep a record of how this goes. Do you want me to go through the names? That's the best thing. Then I can um, can check with Anwen. I'll go through the names, as it is now. Freya, first of all. Edgar's proposal is that we go on. I'm in favour of that proposal for the rest reason. It will be discussed fully in the committee, which has been established anyway. Against? 
um, I'll win against. Uh, and when? Right. Oh, in favour. Judith. Judith. The same pick of an inner Judith. Be, 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 I didn't be. pick up that, Judith. What was your vote? Sorry, I can't hear you, Judith. The mic, your mic isn't working. Um, right, I'm experimenting against uh, Edgar. Edgar in favour, Elbed against against Gethin. He's not here as far as I can see. Phil Kappa in favour. Uh, I'm in favour. Ivor? In favour. I think in favour. Brian? Brian? Uh, I'm in favour of Edgar's motion. Uh, Tracy? Tracy? Sarah, Tim, the hero, out of the middle. Is there? Sarah has um, uh, has apologised. In favour. Uh, uh, That's all. In favour. Yeah. Abstain. Uh, my can you get together with the Gary? Uh, okay. I some of the mine. He eats um, uh, Miss Sam. Uh, Edgar's motion has been carried, so we're moving on to the next item. Thank you. It's important to note that this will be discussed in a committee that's more suitable rather than to try to make a decision of this size. By this, authorities access the names with the under is perfectly safe. We'll move on, therefore, to item seven. Um, yeah, um, Thank you, Chairman. On page 13, you can see that we delete that item from the action sheet. On page 14, I have a further update on the Europark Youth Manifesto. You can see in the update job description for youth officer being prepared, but I can pre confirm that that job description was discussed in the management team meeting on Monday. Following on from those discussions, there is a need to amend the job description and it will be um, discussed again by the management team and then it will go on to the scoring procedure. There have been developments with that, and in the same vein, you can see on page 16, number seven, action log. It refers to see update above authority 10th of April, and that's the one I've just reported on. That update is relevant to that action, and that's it really. Thanks, Iwan. Does anybody have any matter arising on item seven? If not, can we have a show of hands, please, to show that you support the recommendations? Use the blue hand, if you would, please. Thank you. Motion carried. Thanks, Iwan. Can we therefore move on to the annual audit summary? Who's taking this on behalf of the audit office? I am Chair Nick Selwyn. Nick Selwyn, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you for inviting myself and Eros to the meeting this morning to present the findings from our most recent um, round of audit work. I'll briefly run through um, some background information on this particular document because it's the first time that we've published an annual audit summary to the authority. You probably previously received an annual improvement report, so we've tried to update and reflect some feedback we've had from um, public bodies on, on the quality of the information we provided to try and make our audit outputs a bit more public-facing. 
So the intention of this particular document is to bring together in one place all the findings from our program of audit work that we've recently concluded and published. So it doesn't provide the full detail of all the audit outputs, rather it just summarizes the key issues that we feel are important that members see and brings it together in one place so you get a sense of what we're reporting both nationally and locally that are of relevance to the National Park. So in terms of the content of the report, it's got three key findings or three key areas that it touches on. Firstly, it provides a very short summary of the audit of the authority's financial statements from 2019-20. Secondly, it provides some information on how well the authority discharged its responsibilities under the local government measure 2009 in respect of improvement planning and performance assessment. And then finally, it captures the findings of our Wellbeing of Future Generations examination, which looked at the development of the National Park Management Plan and Kanlanariri. Uh, in addition, uh, as well as the local information, we also provide information on national studies that we've completed since we last reported to the authority. Um, and there were two that I think would be of particular interest to members that we would draw your attention to. One looking at the effectiveness of local, local planning authorities, which was published in 2019. And this touches on the work of the National Park. And the second one, which was published in October of 2020, is around commercialization and local government. We know that Welsh government is very keen for national parks to develop their approaches to commercialization. And we feel that this particular report has lots of useful information will help the park consider how it wishes to go forward with its commercial activity. Uh, as I said, all of the local outputs have previously been reported to the authority. And this is simply a summary of, of the key findings. And the, the final part I would draw your attention to members is that the report also identifies the work that we plan to undertake in 2020-21, which was a review of resilience. And that's the next item on the agenda, item nine, resilient and sustainable services in the national park. Uh, happy to take any question members may have on the annual audit summary, or if you prefer, move on to agenda item nine and deal with those together. Yeah, Nick. It's a good one question on coffee. I Thank think. you, Nick. Does anybody have any questions in relation to item eight? Yeah. Edgar? Yeah, uh, in question. Uh, it's not a question. It's a comment, really, in relation to page 22, where it states... Um, sleeping out in Wales, it's a, everybody's problem, but nobody's problem. Everybody's responsibility and nobody's problem. I think we should have seen this when we were discussing the planning application in Dogesha last week. I think we should really keep this type of thing in mind. Tim, a question on page 19. We're talking about the stats on planning and stating that one of every 20 uh, go against the members' advice. How do we compare on that? Uh, uh, do we actually conform in the same as everybody else, do you think? Are we on the same level as them with those planning decisions? If I deal with the first question um, in terms of the rough sleeping report, uh, just to note that we are going to be following up on that particular piece of work in this current financial year, so we will be providing an update. And yes, the member is quite right. This is an important topic that does um, cover all areas of Wales. It's often seen as an urban problem, but we know through our work that homelessness hits every area of the country and can impact rural areas as much as, as urban ones. And if in many ways is more challenging in a rural environment than there is in a, in a city. On the second one on how the authority compares, uh, I would suggest that the members consider the report published by Welsh Government, which brings together all 25 planning authorities' performance, which will allow you to judge how well yourselves um, operate against others. Um, I don't think from memory that the National Park is particularly out of sync with other authorities, and its performance generally is pretty good, um, but I don't have the detail to hand, I'm afraid. Thank you. John, do you know? Um, John, did, did, did you know? I don't have the statistics to hand at the moment. In the last quarter, as far as speed is concerned, we were just just short of 70 in six weeks, which is short of the target of 80. But since we're all still working from home, it's not too bad at all. And it's certainly improving and it's significantly improved over the past year as well. 
Can we have an answer to um, Tim's question? Could you send it on to the members? Okay, then I will do. Thank you. Does anybody have any other questions on item eight? Otherwise, we'll move on to item nine. On to item nine. Is it you again, Nick? Uh, yes, Chair. Myself and Eros will um, present this item, if that's okay. Yes. Um, okay. We, we've got a short presentation that we've brought together for members, which will hopefully contextualise and summarise the key findings from this particular piece of work. So I'll ask Eros to share screen now, and I'll wait until that's up before we, we go into it. Oh, there we are. It's already there. Um, could you move on to slide two, please, Eros? So I think... We, what we want to do with this presentation is to give a bit of background to members about the work of Audit Wales, what we undertake, um, why we've undertaken this particular piece of review, this particular piece of work, and then run through some of the key findings, and then just conclude and, and provide members with an opportunity to provide us with any questions or observations you may have in terms of, of what we're presenting to you. Um, just for background, uh, our annual plan as an organisation sets out three key aims for ourselves. And that's to really focus on three things when we undertake our audit work. And, and this pretty much covers what we try to achieve through this particular review of resilience. First, we look to assure people that public bodies in Wales are spending money wisely and using the resources they have available to deliver the services they have responsibility for. Secondly, we seek to try and explain how public money is being spent and the challenges that you face as an organisation in delivering your services. And thirdly, we try to come forward with proposals for improvement that allow you to develop and hopefully inspire you to change and improve how you provide services. Can you move on, please, Eros? Um, this has been probably the most unusual year that I've certainly been working in the public sector, and no doubt for yourselves as the National Park. And I think 2020, 21 has been a challenging environment for pretty much everyone who's been involved in, in public service delivery. Um, unsurprisingly, Audit Wales has tried to reflect the unique position that the public bodies have faced and how it's undertaken its work. And one of the things that we've tried to do this year is, is deliver our program of work to support you to deliver what you need to do in terms of your core services and your core activities. And that's been achieved through a number of ways. Um, probably the biggest thing that we undertook was something we call the COVID Learning Project, which was aimed at the main public bodies who provide services in Wales to understand their experiences in responding to COVID and how they were using those opportunities to shape, change, reform, review, and improve the services that you provide. And we were really grateful for the, the work that the National Park has undertaken, working with us to understand the impact locally within Snowdonia and how those services that you provide were being shaped by your experience of responding to COVID. And through our learning program, we identified a number of good practice examples that we've shared widely across Wales and elsewhere for others to learn from. And we just listed a couple of examples on the slide. Um, could you move on, please, Eros? In addition, at the end of February, beginning of March, we also undertook what we called our COVID Learning Week, where we published a range of outputs um, focused on different sectors within public. And that included a specific video that captured the work of Snowdonia. Um, Emma participated in that. and We were really grateful for his time and agreement to, to do that. It also includes officers from Pembrokeshire Coast. And this brings together in one place um, around 20 minutes of information on how you as organizations learned your way through the, the pandemic what you've taken away from that, that you're using to um, streamline and improve your services and the opportunities that this presented. And this resource is available on our um, website if members are interested in looking at it. But again, just to thank Emma for his participation in that exercise. Can you move on, please, Eros? In terms of resilience there, and why have we selected resilience? Well, well, we felt, given the situation that you were facing as an organisation, understanding how resilient you were was essential to enable us to judge whether you were well placed to respond to the challenges you faced. And this particular graphic is part of the research we undertook for our review, and it brings together some um, information collated by the New Zealand Resilience Organization. It's a national body set up by the New Zealand government um, in partnership with the Australian government on the key issues that you need to think about in terms of how you create a resilience organization. And it's got three key things that they, they sort of focus on. One is around leadership and culture. Do you have the right leadership and a good working culture to be able to respond to challenges you face? Secondly, do you have good networks and relationships? Do you work well with others? Are you um, integrated in how you respond? Do you have the right resources in place? And finally, do you have a good plan that allows you to respond to changing situations on the ground 
um, and allow you to, to tackle those unforeseen problems when they arise. Can you move on, please, Eros? In terms of um, how we've used that information, we've distilled it down into a headline question that we sought to answer in our view, and that's looking at how well the National Park was managing its resources to secure its short and long-term resilience. And we, we distilled those sort of 13 areas into five core themes that we felt better reflected work of the authority. Uh, we looked at your finances, we looked at your governance and decision-making arrangements, we looked at your workforce, your major assets, and then we looked at your business continuity plans. Can you move on, please, Eros? In terms of the methodology, we published a, a terms of reference um, for the authority, and we discussed that with senior managers. But I just want to draw out the sort of key things that we undertook in terms of bringing the evidence together to allow us to make a judgment. Um, we obviously used our previous experience and knowledge of the park to get a good contextual understanding of your work and what you do. We reviewed a, a range of key documents that really give us an insight into your plans and how you responded. We interviewed and held focus groups with officers and members, and that was in, incredibly um, important for us to get a real feel for how you were managing on the ground. We also undertook a very short survey with all staff and members and had a pretty good response rate. Around a third of, of officers and members responded to the survey. And then finally, we, we produced a draft report and um, provided that to the senior managers in the park to discuss our conclusions and amended in light of their comments. Can you move on, please, Eros? And just as an overall conclusion, uh, I think we would say that the authority responded very well in the pandemic. Um, but what it did highlight is that you have some challenges in the longer term that you need to think about to improve your resilience and sustainability. And, and Eros will now run through the, some of the key findings from the five areas we touched on, and then we'll conclude and, and open it up to, to questions. Okay, Eros. Thanks, Nick. What are that? We, before we go into the detailed presentations, the first thing that we need to do is to consider the period we've been in. It's not some science and it does vary in different contexts, but in general, most people would see the short term as the next one to two years, medium term, three to five years, long term, five to 10 years, Plus, Nick has referred to a general question and the question regarding re long term resilience, and that touches on the medium term as well. So, what is medium term and long term for you? Well, the purpose of this is to make the links with the um, statutory plan that you've adopted, which is contemporary. It's a five year plan, but obviously, with a vision and uh, aims be beyond that. So it would be good for us to consider it in this context and the ability of the National Park to actually realize continuity. As far as resilience is concerned, the first of the five elements that we looked at was the financial situation. The graph here shows the reserves as a share of the cost net and they are higher than every other park in Wales and in England as well. Although it's usable reserves, it's good to note that 8% um, have already been set as for specific things. So we need to look at the dependency on grant funded projects and the challenges as a result of that, especially monies which become available at short notice because it's very difficult to plan for that. We come to the conclusion that the park is in a sound financial position on the whole, but there are challenges to note in the context of grant funded projects. Applications for finance can be underestimated When you and their demand on corporate services and it can impact other services. And we need to look at the exit planning as well when a project comes to an end and how to maximize the good work that's been undertaken as part of the project and the contribution to the bigger picture, which is continuity. As far as governance is concerned, we come to the conclusion that there are sound governance systems in place, but there are opportunities to learn from 
the things that have happened during the pandemic where there have been quick and dynamic responses from the park. There isn't any uh, rocket science again to this. It isn't just that there is a need to revamp the current structures and learning in this context means if you consider what's been put in front of committees and ensure that the focus is on strategic elements and of course the role and contribution of members hand in hand with that there is an opportunity to look at retraining and developing members and how the members take advantage of that that's in the context of resilience and how flexible the authorities in the whilst keeping in mind the long-term challenges in front of you i think you're start you're starting on a good footing and the report says that you've quickly adapted to remote meetings and including members involvement in that when there was a requirement to do so moving on to the workforce First of all, if we were to look at the last year specifically, officers have put in the hours last year and have gone, gone the extra mile in response to the pandemic and internal communication and the way that the authority uh, supports itself are obvious strengths. The graph shows the responses from the staff to the survey. I'm hoping you're able to see this. It's a bit small and it's in Welsh only at the moment, but obviously it's available in the paper reports as well. I will refer, for example, 93% of staff said that they feel safe in their work. 93% have said that they are able to balance um, caring responsibilities and are still able to deliver their work 100 percent and feel that they have any everything they need as far as equipment etc that they need to undertake their job and um, 86 percent feel that their ma manager are making an, an effort to keep in touch with them that's high but it's worth to note that 14 percent have noted that they don't feel that and it's something to keep an eye on especially with the pressures that have been during lockdown and the reopening two other points to draw attention to as far as the workforce is concerned and this goes beyond the pandemic and our general points first of all i've mentioned the effect of grant funded projects in the context of finance but as far as the workforce is concerned paragraph 34 of the report notes the challenges that is the number of officers that are employed on short-term contracts and of course they leave to go to another post before the project has actually come to an end and it's understandable from the viewpoint of the individual but it can pose a risk for the authority um, with regard to the risk it puts on other members of staff and delivering the projects and the ex exit planning as well. Secondly, as far as planning the workforce is concerned and succession planning, we recognize the challenge that there is to a relatively small organization, but there could be more that can be done to extend the officer's experience across the park so that there is a plan B in place when people do leave, that there are and there are people who have had some experience in a specific area are um, ready to step into the gap when required. On to assets, the report draws attention to the variety of assets that the park has and the factors you need to consider in managing assets as and Welsh Government's emphasis on being more commercial operationally. Past Anna Bolch, we're aware of the situation there, but the report doesn't go into great detail about Past Anna Bolch. We do draw the members' attention to the need for scrutinizing performance in order to ensure the success of the new business model that's in place. And then in general, the world is a very different place to what it was uh, year or so ago and the use of assets and attractions in the park is going to be different and as a res 
as a result of that, and there's an opportunity to reevaluate ownership and management of assets. How does the ownership of assets reflect the statutory purposes and the priorities of Welsh Government? Answering questions like that with a strategic hat on mean that the power can be more um, forward thinking and on the front foot in regard to managing resilience. The fifth element that we looked at was business continuity. The report notes several strengths with business continuity. It follows our work in, with the authority in the past in the sense that it's not surprising that partnerships and joint working have come out as very obvious strengths. The partnerships that you have in place have enabled you to respond jointly to significant challenges over the past year. Secondly, obviously, officers have taken well to remote working, and I've already mentioned the way in which they've been supported in that. IT systems, it's something that we need to draw attention to. It's assisted with um, the ways of working. The main message as far as resilience and business continuity is that you continue to work, uh, learn lessons like you have with the pandemic and ensure that that is fed into the business continuity plans in the future. The report makes um, three um, recommendations for improvements. I'll pass this back to Nick. I'm happy to take questions afterwards from the members as well. Nick. Thanks, Eros. So uh, that, that's a quick run through our key findings. And as Eros said, we just want to end on, on a couple of points. Firstly, that we have identified three proposals for improvement, one around um, taking the opportunity to reflect on what you've learned as an organisation through your response to the pandemic and identify how you can embed some of those changes in how you deliver services going forward. Secondly, this issue around how you use grant funding um, and how you manage those. We're not saying that grant funding is a bad thing, but it's about how you um, make best use of that resource to, and understand its impact on your wider services. And thirdly, the, the longer term issue that I think you're well aware of as an organisation is how you manage capacity when you're a relatively small number of officers um, delivering quite a wide range of services. I don't think any of these are things that you're not aware of, and probably in some ways it's good to reflect that you manage the, the, the response pretty well if we're only coming up with these sort of areas. Can you move on to the next slide, please, Eros? Just to, to summarise then, the key things I would take away um, and we would want to emphasise is that from our review, we felt the authority responded very well to the pandemic. We think you've got pretty good short-term resilience. Your continuity plans allowed you to respond. Yes, there were things that were stressed and, and, and tested that you needed to change, but that's normal sort of expectation in any crisis that you respond to. The challenges that you have, I don't think are things you're not aware of. Um, it's just allowed you to contextualize them. And I think from myself and Eris's point of view, when we undertook the work, we feel that you're in a pretty good place to build upon the work that you've developed in your partnership arrangements, particularly um, to deliver and hopefully make Penlin a really success. And I think that's all we've got in this, the slides. Um, can you move? Yeah. And it's, it's back to you, Chair, and, and members to see if you have any questions that you'd like us to um, go over. Thank you very much, Nick. It's a very positive report. I'm very glad to see how the authority and staff have responded, especially when we consider that we've had several years of cuts and we've come out on top and come these types of suggestions. Like you said, Nick, there's nothing there that was a shock to us. We're aware of these concerns and we're dealing with them as well as we can. Are, uh, uh, Chairman, uh, we've lost the translation of Owen's question. Sorry, I was on mute. It's fine now. I was on mute. Sorry. It's fine. I was on mute. I was on mute. Could, 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 could we have it summarised, please? I was on mute. Are you hearing the translation now, Brian? 
I, can you hear me, Brian? I was on mute. I apologise for that. Just, uh, uh, my, I was so I'll begin again. Just to um, say what the chairman said, that we welcome the results and uh, and the report itself. And I think that it does reflect our experiences as members at the time, certainly um, as we were and, and towards the end of the summer. There are four points, specific points, which I want to raise. But if I can come back to that at the end, after I give the opportunity for other people, first of all, um, um, if I can do that. If I, the first thing is about um, and paragraph 20, um, where you refer to at the time, I take it that you refer to officers, um, not that I want to um, want to, um, you know, put a lot of tension on my role as chairman, but at the time I was under quite a bit of pressure. And um, the statement isn't quite so full. That is, there was regular consultation um, between the chief executive of myself, which allows um, on um, the officers, but I'm sure you'd agree that one or two things there of the input of the chairman, the report as it is, isn't, doesn't quite um, show how Snowdonia has been. And the second point is that there is and um, what's come on the other side of this that the staff has been very hard working but we're in a danger of, um, because maybe we're not quite competitive enough and we lose staff because our salaries aren't uh, competitive enough but that is a point which we must deal with um, uh, in the future and that's and soon as well in the near future the third point then on the bottom of page 37 um, since you did this work of course we have reviewed the strategy and i don't know whether you've had the opportunity to see um, to include this review um, but we'd welcome the fact that you could have a look at it and um, so that we can move forward with this. And the just final point, the appendix to the matrix at the bottom, well, that um, is a very useful matrix and we'll bear that in mind as we move forward. Um, in to keep that in mind and certainly there is a tendency for us to concentrate what we want to begin to do rather than what we should do less of maybe and that is a very useful matrix for all the members in my opinion and i'll be quiet now and i look forward to what i'll come back to you if i have the opportunity thank you very much who wants to ask Sir Wen's questions? I don't mind starting, Chair, and, and Eros no doubt will um, will join in. So I think you want, you asked four questions. Uh, the first one around um, your role as chair and the regular engagement with chief executive. I think we would agree that the report could be um, improved if we did reflect on that and did include that particular point. So I mean, apologies for not capturing that when we undertook the review. I think that's a fair comment. We do recognise that you're. Um, delegated powers did allow you to work in that way. Uh, the second point in terms of staffing is something that we've we've continually reported in, in recent years that we do recognise the challenges 
you do face as an organization. Um, and we wouldn't disagree with your comments that this is something that is obviously going to be sharp in mind when you think about the future resilience of the organization. Uh, the third one on past Hannibal, we, we did discuss in broad terms your plans um, for the future with, with you and, and colleagues. No, it was a way to point to the past and book. It was the asset strategy in general. All right, sorry. Uh, yes, um, we, we are. I think from our view, we would say that it's less to do with the specific assets, but more about your strategic intent from the assets. So we recognize that you've got a, a dual role here, that you, you provide services that are important to your communities, and they are essential in some cases for, for Wales as a country. Um, but you're an organization that has to cover the costs of those. So it's your understanding of what's appropriate. And I think the point we're trying to make is that as long as it's on the agenda and you as members are challenging officers and officers work with you to come up with the best solution, then that, that's probably the right way to take it forward. And then the final one on the, the stop start, more or less, that's a, a pretty good model that we've used in the past for some of our resilience work. And we think the same as yourself, that it's a good idea to not only just look at the things you want to take on, but where can you stop doing certain things to give you the capacity to to manage that more effectively. So I would agree with, with all the points made. Thank you very much. Eros, do you want to come in? Just very quickly on the two final points, as far as these uh, upset strategy and the um, what hasn't been considered on this specific work. But, um, we look forward and we look back so that we can feedback can give some ideas on our work this year and next year and in appendix two on the matrix as well yes i appreciate uh, the feedback and um, it's up to you how you want to use the that exercise as members and as an institution it's you know gives you one way of doing it but the report has lots of references to um, what you can do etc thank you Thank you, Brian. Uh, thank you, Chair. First of all, when I read this, I thought it was a very fair report and um, very much welcomed it because it's uh, constructive as well as obviously picking up issues that we need to consider. Um, I have two, uh, one point really, and uh, then a question. Um, the, the point I wish to make is that I think it reflects some of the discussions that we've had, but perhaps articulated in a better way, um, where uh, the need to align some of the work we do better with the, uh, the management plan and the other documents that we have as a strategy. So it's seeing that continu continuity between some of the aspects of the corporate plan and the strategic direction that we have set within the management plan. And I, I, I welcome that. And I think uh, there is work to be done over the next year or two to, to uh, make that more robust. Um, and within that, I think, is reflected the outcome of the carbon scrutiny work and uh, potentially uh, issues that are flagged up that we may discuss later with regard to uh, woodlands and forestry, where they flagged up obviously now within the national priorities and I welcome the comment there from uh, from the audit team of the need to ensure that the national priorities are woven into uh, the work that we do. Uh, the question that I have uh, for the team is and it's it's one that I've grappled with before and any insights the team can provide from work done elsewhere I'm sure would be welcome. And that relates to the, uh, the issue that you've raised of needing to embed the legacy of the grant work into the ongoing program. Um, because uh, obviously uh, where, where funds are available, we can deliver, but some of that work and its ongoing need may need other ways of, of funding it or being applied. And I just wondered if you've got any uh, guidance or thoughts on that. Uh, to help us in our thinking forward, bearing in mind that uh, grant work to date has been a very large part of some of the delivery that we do. Thank you. If I, if I start answering that one, Chair, then I'll hand over to Eros. Uh, I guess two observations I would make. Firstly, um, I think you've been very successful at the grants funding and in clearing the report, we became aware that you've introduced a new project toolkit, which will allow you to take on board 
um, some, some options about how you embed the legacy of your funding into, into the future. Um, so I think that's probably a good starting point for you to start identifying the longer term impact. I guess the other part I would suggest is having a clear focus before you bid for the project, what the likely impact is on other parts of the organization. I think that was the area that, that came out strongly in our evidence gathering, where sometimes um, because you've been really good at getting grants and you've got good experience at attracting funding, you sometimes overlook the potential impact that can have on others. So as long as your toolkit reflects before you bid, as well as when you, you end the, the process of closing the grant and are clear of those elements, then I think you're probably well placed. I don't know if you want to add anything here, Ross. I think you've covered it, Nick. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions arising from the report? None. I don't see any hands up. Thank you very much, both of you. Can I come back? Sorry, Owen. Yes, you can. Yes, thank you. Of course. When you were holding this um, um, investigation last year, there was an, an um, audit as well in the Beacon Beacons, and all the members were aware of the reports there. And we wanted perhaps, well, I think it's right for us to refer to that as um, former chairman of the committee for the three parks. It's important that we learn lessons which come out of it. So I'll just remind members, um, the focus of your work was in Brecon's Beacons, Brecon Beacons National Park was to manage a program of change of, of transformation and um, the planning etc was right but I'd want to ask what lessons have we learned from your plan um, for another part and one specific aspect which I wanted to was and um, no um, what is the relationship between the members, the park and staff? And I think that we are aware that sometimes, you know, we need to look at that, how that is done. And are there any lessons for us in order to avoid, you know, making kind of mistakes in the future? And um, thank you. Who's going to answer that? Lessons to be learned. Yeah, I'll, I'll deal with the, the, the work in Brecon Beacons because I was um, responsible for that piece of work as well. Um, so you, you asked why was it slightly different in terms of what we focused on? Um, it wasn't, it, the review was exactly the same review that we undertook with ourselves and the review we've undertaken with Pembrokeshire Coast. Uh, what changed that particular review was the point in time that we undertook the assessment it became very clear that the organization was in the midst of a change program and rather than look at resilience we focused on the change program because that was the fundamental um, driver for the organization how it was responding to the pandemic in terms of findings and lessons learned well i think the report that we've published which is available on our website highlights the major issues that we feel that that particular national park has to address and, and they are responding to that positively um, i'm not sure that i could say much more beyond that i'm afraid um, it's clearly out in the, in the public domain and it makes clear that what our findings are and by reading it you'll see that it, it focuses on governance and that's one of the five areas we looked at with yourselves and we felt that the governance arrangements in Snowdonia were stressed in the in the pandemic but responded positively and worked well. Yeah I think the point of making Nick is were there any lessons for the other two parts in terms of managing a change program, a, a, a transformation program as, as wide as that? Uh, th there are, um, but I don't know if this is the right forum to go into the detail of that for um, a variety of reasons. Um, I'm happy to, to take questions offline if that would be helpful, but I'm not sure it would be beneficial or fair to Brecon Beacons to discuss that here. No, Thank you. Can I just um, bring your comments, Owen, then 
about um, you know members and officers um, which you referred to. Um, it's very important um, with governors, as you referred, with that well, the point where that interface becomes apparent. Several committees and so on are held, and the behaviour and performance then becomes very important in order to maintain that interface and to make sure that members then concentrate maybe on the strategic matters and that is the perception and that is the way of making the most making the most of it from what we can see thank you thank you unless somebody else has a question do we accept the report Uh, when um, proposes, it's been seconded. So could you all show, please, that you accept? Put your the blue hand up. That's been carried. Thank you. So therefore, we'll look now at item ten. Who's leading on this? I lead, Chairman. Thank you, Eros. Audit Wales. Thank you, and good morning, members. You've heard by Nick and Eros. They've been looking back on some of the messages which have been um, which come out of our work during the past year. Well, the plan um, which you see in the papers today is the um, plan which audit. Um, intends doing in the year to come um, and looking I take it that your members have read the scheme and I'll just mention maybe just some of the main things in the document before I transfer to Nick to talk about the performance work which arises but as we've heard this morning COVID-19 has had a substantial effect um, on the, our way of working, you, we as auditors and you as an authority. And at present, we intend to continue working remotely during the year, but obviously we'll have to keep an eye on things and we'll have to keep an eye on the situation. Turning to page 49 of your package, as far as the audit, um, financial audit, concerned. Um, one at the bottom of the page um, summarizes the main things which came out of the um, this. And I'll just your attention to the main points which um, and how we are going to respond to these risks. At the bottom of the page, you have international um, audit standards. And um, you can see there. So We'll have to consider the use of things such as journals, reviews, and estimates, and any then transactions which are outside the usual business of the authority. And um, the draft financial statements are available to us. And on page 50, as you mentioned already, the effect of, as I mentioned already, the effect of COVID we've found out two additional risks because of the effect of the pandemic, as you see on this page. And first of all, the risk, which is um, the um, quality of the work can be affected. You know, we're all meeting from work uh, from remotely today. So we'll have to, um, we have been as well working with Emir to develop and confirm the requirements of um, this year to help the process to close the accounts and to audit the accounts. And secondly, there's additional risk of with COVID. We've heard about perhaps some of the additional income which the Welsh Government has shared to the authority and which will come in the future, such as the hardship fund. We've heard that it's obvious that there are and substantial 
material matters which will come in, which you will have to reflect in the financial statements. So we'll be reviewing the income by the Welsh Government to confirm and ensure that everything has been achieved and, and um, is shown in the financial statements. So those are the main elements which I wanted to raise. Um, we'll, before we move, well, as we move on, the details of the fee, etc., has been set out on page 53. I know that there's a lot of interest in the fee usually, and the details appear on page 54. As you see, we intend that the fee is around 27,000 for the audit of accounts and 45,000, the total fee, along with the performance audit work. As you see, the fee last year was higher than the original intention for the reason which we reported back to the authority in November. And that the quality of the financial statements at present, we are quite comfortable that the fee, that the proposed fee will be consistent with the scheme at the beginning of last year, um, so, but we'll keep the situation under review. The details of the team is on page 55. The only change to the uh, team is that Sean Owen has rejoined the team after um, maternity leave. And finally, the timetable of the work shows on page 56. And at present, we intend to complete the work by the end of September to report back to you in October and um, the audit of financial statements. So I'll leave it there, Chairman. And so I'll just transfer now to Mick to see if anything he wants to add about uh, what I've said. Yeah, thanks, thanks Mick? Matt. The, the only um, points I would want to raise for members in terms of performance audit work is to know that with the local government elections bill being introduced and now becoming finally an act that the local government measure is now being repealed so we will not be undertaking um, the same level of certification work that we have in the past on your improvement plan and performance assessment although you are still required to report on your performance on last year's improvement plan that's the only work that will be undertaken on that piece of legislation um, our other responsibilities broadly relate to how you're delivering your um, various responsibilities under the well-being of future generations and ensuring you have value for money in the delivery of frontline services. So our plan is, as we have in other years, is to discuss um, a proposed programme of work with the chief executives of the national parks um, to agree and finalise the terms of reference for that work and to make that available to members to discuss um, in the near future on, on what we plan to undertake. And again, the, the, the focus is very much going to be around WFG, value for money, and probably extending to include the Welsh Government strategic remit for national park authorities, which we know you've got on the agenda as your next item. M Matt's covered the cost in terms of the fee and the time timeline for delivery. Um, I'll not add anything to that, but happy to take any questions members may have alongside Matt. Thank you both. Apologies. Um, any other question by anybody? None? Thank you. If there's nothing else, if there's nothing else, can I thank the four of you? Thank you very much to you all for your report and your presentations. Um, very good as usual, and I'm sure we'll come back to you if um, we have anything else to ask, and we'll be looking at how we govern and on the capacity of the management team in the future as well, because I'm sure we'll be using this report to feed into things. Can I... Um, Uh, Edgar, can I Elwin? Edgar proposes Elwin, then you second. So could you show, please, with a blue hand if you are in agreement? Thank you very much. Thank you to you all.
you are welcome to stay, but we understand if you have um, something else um, calling upon your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thank you. So next we'll move on to item 10. Emir, this is for information. We have received this in March and I'm glad to say that we'd had a letter. I've never seen such a one as a chief executive that we're having this increase in our basic grant. One change um, um, since the letter in March. On the second page of the letter, the fourth paragraph, they mention three million for the national parks. Well, it is 27 because the landscape um, plan doesn't have, so we'll take, they'll take 10% out of everybody's grants, so it's not 3 million, it's 2.7. Members have already mentioned that there are strategically important things here. There are national things which we have to keep an eye of, eye on. The letter as well does reflect that they've changed and, and directorship and that there's more core environmental work there. And I hope that you see the direction they're working in. Um, and to note as well, reporting back to how the authority does this is not quite sure what the situation is now. Um, when the committee meets, because we haven't had a committee meeting for quite a while, but certainly the officers meet me as a chief executive every quarter. Thank you very much. Tracy. Sorry, I forgot to put my hand down, that's why. Right. Sorry, I forgot to put my hand down as well. Brian, are we going for a hat trick or a question? No, I've got a question. Uh, well, raise a point really. Um, on, I referred to it in, in my previous uh, point, uh, but the um, under the penultimate paragraph on page 60, the, the reference to uh, tackling climate change and the need for woodland, it's something I raised quite some time back about the need perhaps for the authority to consider uh, <clears throat> a woodland strategy or forestry strategy from our perspective in terms of mapping where we want to see trees and where we don't want to see trees and see what the outcome of that is. Now, of course, we haven't yet had the uh, full report back from the carbon scrutiny group because there's a link between the two elements here and it'd be interesting to see where that is but really I'm putting a marker down to see what comes out of that and how far we need to look in some detail about uh, where uh, additional tree planting may be something that we either want to promote or support um, where we may wish to try and discourage it in whatever way is appropriate. Um, because clearly it is a significant issue um, from a number of dimensions. So I would just um, want to leave that there at this stage. I found the letter actually was, uh, as well as obviously welcoming the additional funds, I thought the, uh, the steer that's given in there by, by, um, by the minister is, is actually quite helpful to us in, in reflecting on how we uh, need to adjust in the uh, in the coming uh, few years. So thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you. Do you want to come back on something, Emir? If you adopt the next item, um, which Brian was picking up was there, there is a seminar in a fortnight's time with the intention um, so that we'll have um, 
an input there. There are two elements in the draft um, scheme. That is um, to map out how this will happen better in Rari. There is um, a carbon, we'll have money this year to um, look to see how we can extend those as a starting point and then we'll go back to the mid to long term and there are two streams of work going along in the park as well at the moment carbon targets for the authority and as well those will give us quite a bit more information i believe Thank you. Um, yes, it was very. Um, could I just refer to the um, on page 62 to continue to develop policies to make sure that people can continue to live in our communities? Well, um, the response to these concerns now, which are raised by the um, Minister, it is um, obvious that these um, funds, etc., are set by the government in Cardiff. So, do we have, can we have a response um, to the concerns which the um, which the letter raises? Certainly, I can report that to the, um, but it's. Um, John. John may well be um, more, more abreast with this and in relation to Welsh language planning. There may be changes in this field of work after the election as well. This will probably add to the discussion when we'll be discussing the response to the other letter and the proposal that John Pew put forward. Perhaps we could feed into that and what we expect from the government and what we expect the government to do with us. Okay, Owain. Thanks, Chairman. I've seen several of these letters in the past. I don't remember seeing such a positive letter, but like Judith and several others said, as well as the financial side of things, there are hooks, if you like, that we can use. It'll be interesting to see. Um, I'm sure that Emir will share our hopes for future joint working. There's one specific point on page 61, where there's reference to the economic and social duty that's just come into force. How will we are going to undertake an assessment of that? I know the usual procedure is that an assessment is undertaken of every document. How are we going to approach this? And include that duty in our activities, Emir. The assessment is undertaken at the same time when the equality assessment is undertaken. An agreement has been made across the public bodies to undertake it as a wider document. But there's a lot of learning that needs to be made as well, and there will be lessons coming out on actually catching these issues or capturing these issues. Somewhere in this letter, they do recognize that there are capacity issues within the parks in order to deliver. So there's an additional hook there really to get more resources. And we do not always have to do the work ourselves all the time, but we need to make sure that we have an influence in order to maximize the national park purposes. Thanks, Amir. Tim? I just wanted to discuss um, the bottom of 61, future of farming, a bit further. We know that this is close to Emir's heart, and I'm glad to see that we've 
provided them with advice and helped them with a recent consultation. I'd like to think that we could have more input and provide something better of the cluster as far as conservation and the agriculture industry is concerned. But would it be possible for us to be a part of delivering this in the future? Because Dear um was very successful and beneficial to the pack and it developed a good relationship with the farmers and agriculturists. Well, we've put forward the proposal to plan something initially to see if we are relevant bodies to undertake this type of work. We have worked with NRW and Welsh Government in order to make sure that consignary management plan is reflected in the sta area statements. They've already said that the area statements are more or less going to be creating a picture of what these um, plans are going to deliver. But of course, politics comes into this very strongly. It depends what color there will be in government, if there will be two in power. And the concern is that um, there will be less work to undertake this work. So there are lots of things being held up at such, and I won't go into that at the moment. That's another debate that needs to be resolved. The only thing that we can do is to be available. And we, if we, you know, the horse doesn't drink, so to speak, there's nothing we can do about that. As a member, if we can help with anything, I'd like uh, to see us putting forward some proposals if we can do. John? Thank you, Chairman. I totally agree with Tim. Tir Kermen was the best scheme that's been. The link with the agriculturists were there, and officers, of course. And there's too much non grazing now, and we need to see, cons in order to see conservation and agriculture working, they need to work together. Going back to Brian and trees, it's easy to say that um, these areas need to be mapped out, but we have to remember that the parks and is mostly private, so you'd have to cooperate with the landowners. And I propose, well, the trees would probably be commercial trees, which would be required to be planted because it has to be looked at as an investment. Native trees don't bring a return at all. So as a business, who is going to plant native trees where there are no returns to be had? And of course, with sustainable tourism and the outdoors, we need to look into that and make sure that that's working. And the most important things for me is the Welsh language and the culture and make sure that we have the plans in place in order to promote the economy and the native people and the Welsh language and those who want to live here. Thanks, John Elwin. I agree with everything that John has said there. If we're going to go after more um, forestry and woodlands, we need to look at um, controlling things like uh, badgers and bec because they these types of things can become a clay plague and we need discussion on that. I think we need to know what we're dealing with. I don't think planting trees everywhere is the answer to everything, but we need to know which trees and where are appropriate. We have quite a big project in Dogesla where we're moving trees because they've been planted in somewhere that was not appropriate. And we need to reduce our carbon as well. If we don't have any other questions, can we have a proposal that we accept the report, please? Ellen's proposed. Edgar has seconded. Can we have a show of hands with the blue hand, please? Motion carried. 
on to the corporate work program item 12 a1 thank you chairman you can see under the well-being act we have to have a well-being statement and if you remember we have adopted a well-being statement and well being objectives in the performance and resources committee on the 25th of march and the well-being state uh, um, objectives that have just been adopted concentrates on three key areas resilient uh, environment uh, resilient ways of working and in every one of those there are five sub themes as well which it allows us to concentrate on the main aims. And in accordance with the previous arrangements, we've set out a corporate work program, an annual one, and the well-being objectives themselves are mid-term now. They're, they're for five years, but the corporate work program runs from year to year. And there will be some matters, I would imagine, that will run over from one year to the other. They won't fit neatly just into the one year. You will see under the appendix, the work, corporate work programme itself, the main themes and the sub themes have been set out and the matters that we deal with during the year. And following that, there's one section on ha stating how we're going to measure that, how we know that we have succeeded in achieving the well-being objective, and that's how we'll measure them. And they're relevant to the three well-being objectives. I won't run through these page by page. But I would just like to say also that the matters in this work program, well, we have tried to be a bit more strategic in nature. Members have said in the past that we are looking at issues that are too minor. So hopefully you'll agree that these uh, have a bit more meat on the bones and you'll see the difference that's being made but I do um, and will appreciate any inputs that you will have and I'll open it up to discussion thank you do you have any questions or anything to say in relation to the formats is everybody happy I think they look a lot better. It's much easier for you as officers and it's much easier for us as members to be able to understand them. Great, thank you. Thanks for that, Tracy. I, hopefully that'll continue and when that'll continue when we um, deal with them in the Performance and Resources Committee. Owen, I agree with the comments. One thing that did struck, strike me, and I know it's not reflected in the well-being statement, but the review of the local development plan with corporate partners, we're starting the process of reviewing that, and it's not being re reflected in the corporate work program. I don't know where it should be, but I. Perhaps we could have John and the ones um, comments on that. That is how we keep an eye on progress on the review. Yes, I can respond to that. The timing doesn't work really brilliantly. As you know, the review of the LDP will start formally in 2023 and it lasts for four years. So by the time we've adopted that plan, the process is a bit behind this process. But certainly one thing that we'll be doing in connection with that will be 
creating any sub policies such as SPGs, and that can filter into this work. As far as the review itself is concerned, it's a bit far off now for us to integrate it directly, but there may be sub policies of the current plan that may well be possible. Perhaps we need an appendix which assists us as members in order to understand. I know that there's a formal review, but there is preparatory work that will happen over the next 18 months. And perhaps we need to understand what the program is in relation to that. If you can have the time and capacity to put that together. On that point, there is an intention to bring that in front of the planning committee in July, I believe, as far as the review is concerned and the programme for that. Thank you both. Judith. Thanks. I agree with Tracy and Owen. Congratulations. It looks great. And thank you. On page 81. You're talking about engagement strategy. I'm interested in that. And I was just wondering if we could have um, a look at that, if that's appropriate. I think it's being presented to the next um, working group or the one after that. OK, then. Thank you. Tim, just one small thing. On page three, we're talking about responding to the challenge of climate change. What's in there is great, but I would like to see. We're talking about it in other places, and as far as it's, there's nothing here on land management. There may be something in the policies, but say if it, with land management and how we manage peatlands, it would be good to see things like that in there to show that we are thinking outside our own remit or, or land at least. We could have something in there to, just to show that we are working on that. C 2.5 does touch upon that really, but I'd like to see something a bit more explicit in there, if possible, just to show that we are working on that. Okay. Ewan said that he welcomed um, comments, but I think he was fearing some changes as such. I can um, certainly accept that there will be changes, but it's a matter of striking a balance. If you think that's strategic and it, that it needs to be included, that's fine. But Emir's point. I was going to come in with the same point. I think the report that we've commissioned is, will be reporting on that element and will include what we do in the field of agriculture. I just wanted to see it written down as such so that we can say, yes, this is it. This is where we're undertaking that. I know that the work is being done and I do know that you have it in your minds, but I'd just like to see something where the Prime's group would be able to say, there you have it, it's written there. If everybody agrees, I can see that it's a strategic matter for the authority, so we'll include it. OK, thanks. Brian? Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, I echo the, comment, <coughs> the comments of others that the way it's set out now, it becomes much clearer to to follow things through. So that's uh, that's great. Um, turning to the resilient ways of working section, I was just be interested in Ewan's thoughts as to the way that we've got it set at the moment, whether he feels that, that gives him the opportunities to take on board a couple of the things that came out of the audit review that we discussed earlier, particularly in regard to the legacy from the grant funding projects and also uh, the question of um, staff resilience in relation to how we 
uh, spot and grow talent within the organisation and whether in fact we have a, a policy at the moment of how we do that. If not, maybe within the programme there, we should find uh, a home to consider a policy for how we spot talent within the organisation and grow it to gain wider experience, not only within the organisation, but perhaps within other national parks uh, within the country on secondment for periods to, to gain um, different skills and insights from which we can benefit. So really any comments you've got as to whether those two things can be covered within what you've got at the moment or whether we need to add to it. Yeah, uh, Brian. Thanks, Brian. When we were preparing this, we were aware that Joe was going to retire. And when she reported back, she reported on some elements and said that they would probably be better for the person who replaced her would have the relevant input on these matters. But I would definitely agree. We probably <coughs> need to include that we we'll look towards developing our um, workforce further and we could include that under CW1 where we look to or, or and look after staff and what opportunities we have for developing them internally. It's an important way of ensuring that there is resilience there in the way that we face the challenges for the future. Thanks, Iwan. Thank you. If there are no further comments, can anybody propose that we accept the report with Tim's and Brian's comments? Edgar and Phil proposed. Can we all have a show of hands, please? Motion carried. Thank you. Ewan, are you taking the next item as well? The annual report of independent remuneration, item 13, page 95. First of all, I apologize, I noticed that the link in the Word version worked, but the PDF version doesn't work. So I take it that perhaps you've all had the same problem. Apologies for that. The annual report is, of course, available. If you look for the independent remuneration panel for Wales, it'll come up straight away. The link you got in the performance resources committee worked and there haven't been any changes relating to the park in the final report and you were happy with the report as was like I presented back in November. So the recommendation quite simply is to note the content of the report. Does anybody have any questions? Either Tim, Elbert or are those old hands that you've got up there? Uh, Owen. Owen? Propose that we accept the report. Anybody do you second that? Uh, and can we all have a show of hands, please? Thank you. On, therefore, to item 14, which is the report of the Members Working Group. Anwen? Thanks, Chairman. Just for information, I don't know if anybody has any questions in relation to this. Or relating to these minutes, if you wanted to raise anything. Edgar? Elau, sorry. It's Elau. an old hand I had up. Um, apologies for that. No questions. Can we have a show of hands to show that you're accepting? Propose that we accept the report. Can we have a show of hands, please? 
Thank you. Motion carried and on to calendar of meetings. Is that acceptable for everybody? I think it's in the same format as usual. And it's nothing her head there. So it's just a matter of accepting it, I think. Brian, did you have any question that you wanted to ask? No? Chair, old hand. Propose that we accept the calendar. Can we all have a show of hands, please? Motion carried, thank you. So that will be confirmed now and shared to among all of the members. Thank you. Next item, meetings of other organisations. Anyone? Did anyone have anything that they'd like to report from an organisation? Well, my hand is also a Owen, and it's not an old hand either. I just wanted to update you on the, bios the Biosphere Partnership. I was unable to attend the last meeting. And Tim went instead of me, so he may have something to add. I've been working as a part of the executive group over the past months. The background is that a, re a periodical review has been undertaken of the biosphere. And the conclusion was that, and the challenge for the partnership is to support the partnership as to whether the biosphere is a, a national priority still. And of course, as a result of the Wellbeing Future, Future Generations Act. There were discussions with the minister before COVID took over, and what's happened in the meantime is that the partnership has managed to get monies under the HLF scheme to build on capacity to go green. And one of the options that came out of the report was how they move forward and as to leave, carry on as is, leave, leave it as is, or to adopt a third sector organization to take over the work. And so the fund has been used to put a bit more meat on those bones. And that work will be reported back in on in June, July. Secondly, for those of you who are aware of what's been going on in that part of the world, you'll know that from the sea to the mountain has been going on and as a result of fierce opposition that was withdrawn and they're revisiting it to see how that scheme can be progressed. There are discussions happening in order to be clear on what the different laurels are. Another thing to note is that it's the authorities turn to undertake the secretariat on the partnership. And what's happened is that the secretariat up to now has been changing from public authority to other public authority. For, so it's the second turn for the authority now. And what we've agreed on is that we would finance eco in order to continue with the work. And this, I think is with Gwyneth and Powys. In co having consulted with the chief executive, we wanted to note that work. I don't know, Tim, whether or not you have anything you'd like to add to what I've said already. I think you've covered mostly everything. Just to say, 
there was a presentation um, from Rob Owen and Sue Fern from Company Pro, their consultants who undertake work for them at the moment on the way forward and how things are going. That was very interesting. I'm happy to discuss it further if anybody wants to know more about that. And I just wanted to mention the website development group. There's a task and finish group that I attended. Shall I do that now? It was a very interesting meeting. We have given a company called Creo the work. There are lots of interesting things coming out uh, of that. They're undertaking special work on the with of us so that people understand more about what they're seeing and how they perceive it. This will be very useful and hopefully it will be extended to other areas of the park as well in the future. But I won't provide any too, well, too much information. Alwyn, I had a meeting, well, a virtual meeting of the Anglesey Energy Forum, and this was the first meeting since the white paper was published at Christmas. And there was a lot of interest in the white paper and Christopher Paul Brick from the government or from the nuclear industry went through the 10 points in order to outline the situation. The only new powerhouse that's going to go ahead is Hinkley and there are finance problems in other, in other areas as well. We heard some interesting information from Wayne Roberts from Welsh Government. He said something new that I hadn't heard before. There are companies from Australia and Canada who are developing iso medical isotopes, which, according to him, uh, will treat cancer. There wasn't any information regarding the timetable when this will be developed in terms of it or why there are companies from Australia and Canada who want to establish in order to develop these things. But basically, um, short and sweet, that was the content of the meeting. John? Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the um, Snowdonia um, um, access forum we had last night, and we had a new school um, report um, about Ponte Berva. As you know, a lot of work has been done there, and it's been um, closed for a while. And um, the bridge in Arnuf, well, that's it. So they and then Chris came to talk to us about the coastal path and of course he mentioned the problems there are problems on the coast uh, in many places coastal path in many places and also um, then he mentioned the um, problem caused by four by fours as well um, and as well um, he went on to the volunteer program, Mary Williams, um, and she mentioned things there. And the final thing was the Llanuchlin Railroad, Railway rather, um, mentioned the work that has gone on there, and they hope to bring the railroads into Bala. And that is it. Those were the what was discussed last night. Uh, 
Thank you, everybody. Has anybody got anything else to report which they'd like to mention? Um, there was a meeting. We had a meeting. Um, Gwynedd had arranged it. We had a meeting with officers from Slovenia Park City and Texton who in Utah and how they had dealt with um, COVID and tourism. And several interesting things came out of it. They saw the same increase that we've seen. And they have, um, you know, they reflected the same kind of things as we did. And that they mentioned the problems they had with um, expensive houses as well, house prices and seasonal jobs was a problem as well. And the answers they had, well, what they have, uh, there's no easy answer to this, but they've got a strategy they're working on. And, um, and they're trying to get some kind of answers. There were people who were for and against everything that was put forward as an answer, of course. And um, but they explained what they were doing. And overall, they were quite successful. But it's a long journey. And it is a problem which occurs across the world. And the answers are out there, but we just got to search for them. The next item is the minutes of the committee next step. Thank you. This was a meeting held on the 10th of um, November, beginning on page 109, 110. Anything arising from the minute? 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 16, 117, and 118. Has anybody got any questions arising from those minutes or do we accept them? Greg? I've got a question. Um, they were, we had a meeting of the committee in March as well. I see these are 10th of November. Or those minutes aren't ready yet because of pressure of work. Okay. I accept that. Could you all show that you accept these um, minutes? I propose and I second. Thank you. If you could all show, please. That's being carried. Thank you very much. So the final item today. So thank you very much for all of you for your contributions. And I hope you'll have the rest of uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much.